Coors Light Fox College Football. New head coach Cliff Kingsbury leading his Texas Tech Red Raiders into Jones AT&T Stadium for the 2013 home opener as they face off against Stephen F. Austin in a battle of two high-powered offenses. have been waiting for a glance at home of their new look Texas Tech Red Raiders. They're about to get their wish as the Big 12 Texas Tech Red Raiders welcome in the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks out of the Southland Conference. Good evening from Lubbock. I'm Brendan Burke alongside former NFL defensive back J.C. Pearson. Leslie McCaslin coming up in just a bit. Well, a week ago, no one had heard of Baker Mayfield outside of Lubbock or inside Lubbock for that matter, but the play of the true freshman walk-on has gotten people's attention, J.C. And I'm excited to see how he plays tonight because last Last week, he definitely didn't play like a walk-on true freshman. Over 400 yards passing, four touchdowns, and even ran for one. Those are big numbers to match tonight, but his head coach, Cliff Kingsbury, told us that there's a lot of room for improvement, so we'll see. On the other side, for Stephen F. Austin, they've got a quarterback that they really like also. The senior, Brady Attaway, 450 yards passing and four touchdowns last week. The thing that he has to do tonight to give his team a chance to win is stay away from the turnovers. Had three of them last Last week can't afford to do that tonight and when you've got two great quarterbacks that means there's a whole lot of receivers about to touch the football since December 12th when they hired Cliff Kingsbury they've been waiting for this day here in Lubbock it's Texas Tech hosting Stephen F Austin when we come back delay is over. Now we're just waiting for the teams to warm up as we get ready to play some football here at Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Texas, and some happens die hard. Cliff Kingsbury, 2002 Heisman Trophy candidate, warming up his receivers yeah. before we get going. Yeah, he can still do it. I mean, remember, he ended his career, what, five, six years ago, so he's still in great shape, and this is probably helping him get some of the, the pregame jitters out also. Go out, throw some balls to his receivers, and obviously he can still throw He's probably more comfortable standing at the 40-yard line than he is on the sidelines at this point. Absolutely. Let's talk about the actual quarterback and the guy that he has no doubt had an impact on already at Baker Mayfield. Walk-on, true yes. freshman starting week one yes. at a BCS yes. school. Impressive, those numbers, and a Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week award might be even more impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I'm excited to see how he plays tonight because he definitely didn't play like a walk-on freshman last week. You saw those numbers, over 400 yards passing, four touchdowns, even ran for one. So those are some big numbers to top tonight, but when we talk to, to Cliff Kingsbury, he said there's a lot of room for improvement with this young man, so we'll see how much he improves tonight said he was reckless with the ball. He needs to work on his footwork. He had a laundry list of things he needed to work with. On the other side, J.C. Harper's quarterback is Brady Attaway. He's not a walk-on true freshman. He's been around for a while, a senior and a third-year starter. Yeah, and he's played a lot of football and, and at a very high level. They say he's a Division I quarterback. You see what he did week one, 450 yards four touchdowns, but the thing that he's got to do tonight to give his team a chance to win, and he knows this because we talked to him down on the field, he knows he has to play well, and that starts with not turning the ball over. Had three interceptions last week. Can't afford to do that tonight. Has thrown 48 interceptions over the course of his college career so far here at the start of his senior season. Let's check in again with Leslie McCaslin. Well, Brendan, one of the interesting things about Baker Mayfield is that he's been in this position before. His junior year at Lake Travis High School in Austin, Texas, he was not named the starter until their starting quarterback got injured. But he did such a good job, he held on to the role and led his team to their fifth straight state title, a Texas high school football record. I talked to his high school coach, Hank Carter, this week, and he said Baker was a late bloomer physically, so he worked on other things like his mental game and his competitiveness. He said, I think Baker is used to this underdog role, and he relishes in the opportunity to prove people wrong, Brennan. Thanks, Leslie. JC, late bloomer might be an understatement. Baker Mayfield, only five foot five inches tall as a freshman in high school. Now, another guy from Lake Travis High School. That guy right there who is right now waiting to get his chance to play on the field, Michael Brewer, a sophomore who was supposed to be the starter yeah. here today. And, and that's why guys don't like to miss time when they're injured. Because of a situation just like this, when you're out, the next guy steps up 
and that guy plays well and now you're looking at now a battle or maybe you're the backup so that's why people always wonder why athletes don't really tell when they're really injured or how come they continue to play with injuries because you're afraid that the next guy is going to come in and play well and take your job and that's kind of what Brewer's dealing with right now. Wally Pipp right there is J.C. Harper getting his team ready seventh season ahead coach ninth with the program but a 23 year veteran of collegiate coaching he's coached with guys under Mac Brown, Lou Holtz as grad assistants. He's been around the game for a very long time. And he seemed like he was pretty confident when we talked to him uh, down on the field earlier. I mean, he's got his guys ready to play. He said had a great week of practice. And he's, he's excited to see how his team matches up against a Big 12 team like Texas Tech today. He's the Southland Conference Coach of the Year twice when his team won championships in 2009, 2010. And there's the guy that's stealing all the headlines away from everybody else, 34-year-old Cliff Kingsbury. Hired at just 33 years old and the youngest coach at a BCS school, getting a chance for the first time to be the head coach, but he's also calling the offensive plays. Yeah, and I tell you, the loudest cheer that we've heard so far in this stadium every time is when he comes up on the big screen. Cliff Kingsbury has brought a lot of excitement back to Texas Tech, and they absolutely love him here. We are about to kick off here in Lubbock. Finally, we've been waiting for it for a while, but we are about to get underway. SFA is on the field, and Texas Tech joining them, trying to pump up the crowd as they will receive and let Baker Mayfield work first with the football here in the first half of the crowd. Gets up along with them. Jakeem Grant will be the one receiving kicks today. And boy, does he have some speed to watch out for. Yeah, he's their most explosive player. Plays wide receiver. They line him up at running back and, and even let him return kicks. He's not real big, though. 5'6", 160. But he is extremely quick and extremely fast. Jakeem Grant had a 99-yard kick return last year against Minnesota in the Meineke Car Care Bowl. SFA last week allowed a 100-yard kick return, so a chance for a little bit of explosives here right off the top. As there you see Jordan Wiggs who will kick it away, and the crowd anticipating the kick. I think they're waiting for the clock operator here. We've got to get the clock set. It's still showing 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. We've got to put some time up there. First quarter's already over. We missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so the brand new system here. They've had uh, spent a lot of money putting in a new video board, but that old double T scoreboard right now, reading straight zeros across. There's the new board, 100 feet wide, 38 feet tall, cost $11 million, and this is the first time these guys have gotten a chance to see it. Micah Alwe making the debut on the board, pumping up the crowd. This will get you fired up just being in this atmosphere Absolutely. before the kick. They can't wait. Crowd going crazy. The players on the field are going crazy. They have no idea why they're waiting. <laughs> they're like, put the ball down, let's go. But you got to get the clock set first. I figure they've waited this long. You can wait a little bit yeah. longer. Oh, it says 15 minutes. <laughs> Time to go. They give the ball to the guy they need to. Jordan Wiggs will put it down and get us going tonight. Jakeem Grant is back. Wiggs is ready. Guns are up in the stands. And the debut here at home for this team, Tech crowd is ready to go. And out of the end zone comes Jakeem Grant, and he's got some space up to the 30. Cuts back to the middle of the field and across the 35 before he was knocked down. four yards on the return and Baker Mayfield with some decent position to start things off. 60 pass attempts last week, 43 completions. He's the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week. The last time a freshman quarterback was the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week, his name was Cliff Kingsbury. Wow. This young man's got to be excited starting here at home. And not only did he do all of those great things, he did them on the road at SMU. This is his first snap at home. 
First play, first catch over the middle, breaking away Jason Morrow across midfield. There's some guys to watch on this SFA defense, but watch number 14, Patrick Martin. He's starting in place of LaMarcus Brown, so he's got to play well for him today. They give it to Williams inside, and he gets forward for about three. Some offensive players to watch for Texas Tech, and they're going to go fast. You see that tempo offense so fast that we can't even get the players in. Brendan. They've got it in overdrive for Mayfield, who's alone in the backfield. As they send the speedy Grant in motion, and they sling it over to him. He's got some space on the near side of the field. He's got a first down. He cuts through. No. that he was their most explosive player. They line him up in the backfield now in just a quick swing pass, and the rest is all Jakeen Grant speed and quickness and takes it to the house for a touchdown. Ryan busted for the extra point. And it's 7-0 Tech. It took him 52 seconds and three plays to get to the end zone. touchdown last week we talked about the chance that he would get on the kick return but he gave him the ball at the line of scrimmage and he'll do the rest himself absolutely he's a wide receiver by trade but they line him up all over the field that time the first play of the game they line him up in the backfield Stephen F. Austin loses track of him and now just an easy swing pass and not only do you get the ball in the hands of your best playmaker, but it's an easy throw for your young quarterback as well. Jakeem Grant only 5'6", 160 pounds, and the reason it was only a 63-yard drive is because he took that kickoff out of the end zone and got it across the 30. Did it all himself. But you see the motion there to the backfield and out of the backfield, just an easy swing pass there. Great blocking down the field. Jason Motto down the field, and then Grant does the rest himself. Just too easy. So Texas Tech, they had their plays ready to go. They got to the line of scrimmage in a hurry, and I know that everybody's ready for that up-tempo offense, but that was in overdrive right off the bat. We couldn't even get to the things we wanted to get to because they were moving the football down the field. Yeah, and that's what that tempo offense does. It doesn't allow you as a defense to make adjustments. You can't really talk about what went wrong to play before because you got to hurry up and line up. And if you're confused, they're going to put guys in different positions, and they're going to hurt you. Kramer Fife puts it in the direction of T.J. Ward, their top wide receiver, and he'll take it in. So the 20-yard line is where Brady Attaway will go to work. 37 for 62 last week, but he threw three interceptions, was a little careless with the football, and he has to take better care of it today. Yeah, we talked to him before the game, and he knows that he has to play well in order for his team to have a chance to win tonight. A lot on that young man's shoulders, but he's shown throughout his career that he can make big plays with his arm. J.C. Harper said he played very well, managed the offense well, but made a couple of bone bonehead plays, and that's what got picked up. Yeah, he did say that, and the thing about it is Attaway was sitting right next to him when he was telling us that. He was. So, <laughs> no secret there. No doubt shares his opinions with Brady Attaway. Who has Gus Johnson behind him in the backfield on first down. We've got whistles, although Gus Johnson able to get forward to the 30. Some guys to watch on this tech defense, in particular Terrence Bullock, number one. He plays that Raider position. That's kind of a hybrid linebacker safety. He's going to be all over the field today. After a six-yard gain on first down, 
Five wide receivers, and he threw into double coverage, intending to get it to Mike Brooks, but there were Red Raiders all over him. There's some guys to watch here on this SFA offense, but it has to start with the center. Trevor Murphy, number 55, making his second start ever here in a hostile, loud environment. He's got to make sure that he can communicate the blocking scheme to the rest of the offensive line and then get the snap back to the quarterback cleanly. Aside from last week, the last time Murphy played, he, well, he made 20 tackles last year. Right. He was the defensive the line. Other side of the right. football. It's third and four for Attaway and the Lumberjacks. Had some time, threaded the needle in there as he got it to Tyler Boyd for a first down. And you see, if you give Attaway time to throw the ball, he can put it on the money. And that time, Texas Tech played some soft zone coverages, and they just found the hole in the zone. They told us earlier in the week that they were going to play a lot of man to try to get after Attaway early. So we'll see if that happens. Over the middle, bobbled, but hauled in by Mike Brooks, who stood up and ripped to the turf at midfield, just shy of it. As the tackle made by Trey Porter for the second straight play. And they did try to bring some pressure off the edge that time, but Attaway got rid of the ball before the pressure could get there. And that's one of the things that they were going to judge and see if when they brought pressure, could they get to him early. Attaway to throw again. Open. Aaron Thomas, and he's got himself a first down close to the 40-yard line into Tech territory. I'll tell you what, SFA's got some guys, some skill position players that can make some plays for them. They've got some big-time wide receivers that are quick, fast, and can catch the ball to give Texas Tech some problems. Two men in the backfield, Mike Brooks on the move. And they throw it to him, but it was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Terrence Bullock came flying through and got a piece of it. Yeah, Terrence Bullock, that Raider position guy that we talked about, one of the guys to watch. He's, he's a guy that will come off the edge. You see number one right there, but look at the ball. That's did a that, ball. Did that ball go backwards? You're always taught as a defender to get on those balls, to recover them, make the official make the call. That time, everybody stopped when it really looked like that was a live ball. Second and 10. Attaway throwing down the sideline. Thomas knocked it up in the air and could not recover it. Hola, Lua Felimi in the way of Thomas making the reception. That good coverage by Felimi. Staying between the receiver and the ball, making the receiver have to try to go over him to make that catch. That's great position by Fellini, the defensive back. So it brings up third and ten. First chance for Tech to get off the field. Attaway dumps it off to Mike Brooks, trying to get outside, but caught at the ankles by Trey Porter. That'll bring up fourth down. Yeah. They brought pressure. They brought a lot of pressure off the edges. Attaway made the right read, but Trey Porter, number five, just made a better play. You see the pressure coming off the right, so you get your hot read. He throws it to the right guy in Mike Brooks, but Trey Porter, number five, does a better job in coverage and makes the tackle. It is fourth and eight, and they are going for it anyway here on their first possession. Attaway, with some time, throws over the middle and incomplete off the hand of DJ Ward, his go-to guy. Yeah, that ball kind of got away from Attaway just a little bit. Looked like D.J. Ward got inside of the defensive back, but the ball sailed on him. Texas Tech took 53 seconds to get down the field. Jakeem Grant gets them into the end zone and a 7-0 lead. We got a late start here, but Texas Tech wasted no time taking a 7-0 lead after one possession for each team. Let's check in with Leslie McCaslin. Well, every time Coach Cliff Kingsbury comes on the video monitor here, this crowd goes insane. They love their young head coach. At 34, he's the third youngest coach in FBS, and it's not just him. The entire coaching staff average age is 36. The one thing, though, they learned for the last week's game is that communication has to be better as a staff. Coach Kingsbury wants the 
them all on the same page, guys. Thanks, Leslie Baker. Mayfield looking for Chase tomorrow and throws his first incomplete pass of the game, but it's just his fourth attempt. Yeah, and, and the one thing that I want to see that, about Baker Mayfield is does he try to do too much? After all the hype in week one, does he try to live up to all of that every throw, or does he calm down and let the game come to him? Looking to the running back, DeAndre Washington made the catch, stumbled, and couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. They'll bring up third down and 11. When we talked earlier in the week to Cliff Kingsbury and asked if this guy just showed up on campus in July. How much of the offense does he have? He said he's got it 100%. He's got the keys to the Corvette here. Yeah, he, he's can, is free to make every check at the line of scrimmage like he look, looks like he's doing right now. The only thing is he's got to be able to come to the sideline and explain why he did it. On third and long, he's looking even longer. Brad Marquez hauls it in to the 25. He's made at least one catch in 18 of the 19 games he's played. Make it 19 of 20 with a great grab. He needed every inch of his fingers to grab it. Yeah, and I tell you what, Mayfield, no getting him comfortable. He's going down the field in a hurry. He's looking at the near sideline. Jason Morrow tiptoeing inside the 15 and the first down for the Red Raiders. I tell you, that tempo... Not only is it paying dividends right now, but wait till later in the game. They pride themselves on their conditioning, and you can see how fast they're going. A botched handoff there, but flag had already been thrown. Ball start, number 22 offense, five-yard penalty, first down. And and that was one of the things where, I mean, look at the model number 22. He's still moving. Mayfield's not ready, the quarterback. The center snaps it before everybody gets set. But that's the tempo. That's what they practice at. And sometimes you're going to have those mistakes. Over the side to DeAndre Washington, who got down to the 10-yard line. So making up some of that penalty right away. Seven-yard pickup. And a race to the sidelines for the SFA defense as they try and keep up. Here on second and eight. And and still all, players running yeah, all over. All the confusion. That's what Temple does for you. And they would have liked they the football if the officials weren't holding it up. Here's the option. DeAndre Washington gets close to the five. It'll bring up third down. Tackle made by Malcolm Maddox. And again, this tempo is really going to test the conditioning of SFA. And you see how they wholesale changes on defense that last, that last play. A lot of times, Texas Tech will snap it quickly and get too many guys on the field for SFA. It'll be third and four. Kenny Williams. No signal yet. Just short. So Kenny Williams took it as close as you can go. He did manage to pick up a first down. And so first and goal for Texas Tech from, well, the goal line. And, and I expect Kenny Williams to get a lot of touches tonight. They want to get their running game going. Didn't good, go good last week. They're going to get it going tonight. And they pound it through for the touchdown. At the bottom of the pile was Kenny Williams. Two possessions, two touchdowns for Texas Tech. Texas Tech here early. 9.08 to go in the first. Cut! There's the masked rider on the campus of Texas Tech here in Lubbock. 14-0 the score 
on an eight-play, 59-yard drive that took two minutes and 36 seconds for Cliff Kingsbury's club. Kenny Williams capped it off with that one-yard run. Baker Mayfield on the day so far, six for seven for 114 yards and a touchdown. Deep in the end zone, D.J. Ward won't venture out. Well, that second possession, the first one was fast and impressive. This one also, the great catch by Marquez to set yeah. it up. And, and how about the throw? Mayfield catches SFA in single coverage, and Marquez just great release off the line. And then look at the great catch down the field. Beats the defender, and that sets up the touchdown, the one-yard run by Kenny Williams. But this offense, if they can make big plays, and we've seen Jakeem Grant with the big catch and a big play for a touchdown, they come back the next series with a big play down the field to Marquez. If they continue to make big plays, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a long, long night for SFA. First rushing touchdown for a running back this season on the reverse, and to throw is Tyler Boyd, and he's got a man wide open down the sidelines, and Mike Brooks a little trickery, and the big. And we asked the coach about any gadgets. Are you going to run any gadgets? He said, we had a reverse play. And how about the reverse to Tyler Boyd? And now no one covers Mike Brooks down the sideline wide open. When you're SFA, you have to have all these things in your playbook when you play against the big boys like Tech. And it worked to perfection just there. Mike Brooks with the touchdown catch, but Tyler Boyd, as a wide receiver, only had one touchdown catch, still only has one touchdown catch, but now he has a touchdown pass to add to it. SFA is on the board with one big play. Boyd to Brooks, and it's 14-7. Texas Tech ahead. Avery Henderson was the one shaken up on that last play. He is now on the sidelines getting some attention. The sports and highlight show you've been waiting for is here. Fox Sports Live is Jay Onright and Dan O'Toole are joined by Donovan McNabb, Gary Payton, Andy Roddick, and Carissa Thompson to bring you everything you need to know about the world of sports. Fox Sports Live airs nightly on Fox Sports 1. The first and 10 on the 28-yard line of Stephen F. Austin. Baker Mayfield, play action, flag on the play as Jason Morrow gets down close to the 10-yard line. Holding, number 75 offense, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's on the center, Jared Kester. Made his first career start last week. It's tough for them, watch the center. You can see that jersey pull right there. It doesn't look like much at first, but every time you see that jersey being pulled, they're going to call that for you. Even though he had his hands inside where normally you can have it, you just can't ever get that separation in that pull. So from first and 10, now to first and 20. Instead of at the 11, they're back near the 40. And this is Kenny Williams. Didn't have much room to go. Inching closer to that 35-yard line. And I tell you, the SFA run defense is a lot better than it was last week. They gave up 315 yards rushing last week. Much better today. It's the long passes that are hurting them. And even though the run game still trying to get going for Texas Tech, the run game already better than what it was last week against SMU, where their two running backs picked up a total of 19 yards. Mayfield to the far side of the field. That's the first catch of the game for Eric Ward. And he gets it to the 25-yard line, 12-yard pickup for Eric Ward. Yeah, one of the things David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator for SFA, told us that he wanted to play a lot of man coverage, more than normal today, to see how his corners can play man. Can they cover guys going forward? Right now, they're not doing a very good job. A third down at seven. Amaro is wide open. Ten touchdown. Jason 
tomorrow work in the middle of the field watch him get right behind the inside backer and just a great throw by Baker Mayfield to put it right over the inside backers head and right in front of the safeties and Jason Morrow has an easy touchdown 25 yard strike the extra point is good as well on a 12 play drive 77 yards they were backed up by penalties they overcame those but Jason Morrow is a guy that his coaches refer to as a physical freak yeah 6 5 260 if you try to play a defensive back on him he's too big and he overpowers him if you try to play him with linebackers he's too fast watch him run right by Hunter Harwell the inside linebacker right there just runs right by him and Mayfield puts it right on the money and the safeties have no chance because they're playing half the field cover two that linebackers got to get a lot deeper than that but when you got a guy like Amaro who can run that fast he gets on you in a hurry and three catches for 42 yards last week but he missed the first half of the game was suspended for a punch that he threw in the bowl game last season so he came in during the second half and was a big part of that tech offense as they got better as the game went along 21 points in the fourth quarter yeah no question about it and, and i think he plays a big part in the run game too they struggled in the run game last week but he wasn't in like you said the first half he's a guy that blocks in the run game when they run it and now he's a receiver when they want to throw it so he's a mismatch problem for any defense on trying to match up with him all big 12 tight end second team a year ago and this is dj ward across the 20 and not much farther so it's 21 7 here with 421 to go in the first quarter 25 yard return for dj ward only returned five kicks last year, averaged under 15 yards. There's a lot of players new and a lot of players doing new things for SFA as they try and bounce back from their only losing season in the past five years. You see the total yards there for SFA. Offensively, they're a spread tempo team also, but they've got to get put some first downs together, try to control the clock a little better because this tech offense is too tough right now. Let's introduce you to Gus Johnson, who fumbled the football. Texas Tech has it. Gus Johnson, the running back that had the attention of the Texas Tech coaching staff, hadn't touched the football yet today. The first time he does, he puts it on the ground. Yeah, we talked about how Attaway can't turn the ball over. Well, here Gus Johnson turns it over, and now you give Tech that offense, that explosiveness for the short field to work on. That's the thing when we talk to all of those FSA, SFA coaches, they said the number one thing they can't do is turn the ball over and give Tech more opportunities, and they just did that. It'll be first and 10 from the SFA 26 yard line already with a two touchdown lead. And a timeout taken by Stephen F. Austin and their head coach, J.C. Harper. So Gus Johnson, who was first team all Southland Conference last year and rushed for 117 yards last week, I was surprised, and I know you were too, that it took this long to get on the ball, and now he gets the ball, and he may not get it again for a while. Yeah. Not a good look there on if he was down when that ball came out, and I'm sure that's what they're taking a look at, but you can see right here, better, probably get a better look. Still tough to tell. Yeah, hard to tell when that ball came out. Was his knee down before the ball comes out? I'll tell you what, Dartuan Bush deserves the credit for pulling it out of there. When he pulled it out yeah. remains in question, but they're not looking at it, and we have a first down for Texas Tech at the SFA 26-yard line. And they give it to Grant again with speed, trying to turn the corner, and another cutback, and he gets across the 20-yard line on first down. He took a licking at the end of that play, but they like to get ball the, the ball to Grant when he's already in motion. Oh, yeah. They, they want to get him the ball a lot, and they track how many times their guys get touches, and they review that at halftime to see who the hot guy is and who gets the ball more. Williams has a lane right down Main Street. Touchdown, Texas Tech. And Kenny Williams, 18 yards. Watch 
Washington the center, number 75, Caster. Great job just coming down the field, gets right on that linebacker, and that gives Kenny Williams a lot of room to run. Just too easy there. That Tech running game starting to get healthy. Ryan Buston on for the extra point and puts it right through, but a flag at the end of that kick. Tech scored in 53 seconds on their first possession. That one took 29 on a very short field. We await the flag on the extra point. The try is good. After the kick, personal foul, number 90, Stephen F. Austin. That penalty be enforced on the kickoff. Shavian Hatton, the guilty party. And Kenny Williams has two rushing touchdowns tonight. And I tell you what, that's why you can't turn the ball over against Texas Tech. Their offense is too explosive. You can see what they do. They get the, you give them the ball on the short field, too, and next thing you know, less than a minute, they're in the end zone. Great blocking up front, especially by the center, Jerry Caster. But they just come at you, Brendan, in so many different ways. I mean, they spread you out, and they throw the ball all over. They can come downhill. And with a physical running game like you talked about with Kenny Williams and DeAndre Washington, offensively, when they're rolling, this Tech offense, mighty tough to stop. 3.44 to go in the first quarter. I mentioned they put up 21 points in the fourth quarter last week. That's 49 points in the last two quarters, and we're not through it yet. Still time for Texas Tech and the way they've struck so far tonight. We've seen two drives under a minute. SFA's had a drive that lasted 13 seconds. And if you like defense, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, these spread offenses make it tough. For, for SFA, offensively, they got to try to just, like I said earlier, put some first downs together. Try to keep that Tech offense off the field because they don't need a lot of time to score once they do get on the field. DJ Ward and Mike Brooks are back there, but... They won't get a chance to return it. Have not gotten a chance to take one out of the end zone yet tonight as we check in with Leslie McCaslin. Well, you guys, you've already talked about how fast this Tech offense goes. And Stephen F. Austin knew that coming in. They're trying to sub their players in and out, but I can tell you their defense right now is gas. They are pouring water on their heads. They are just exhausted over here. Not only go so fast but also because those turnovers are just really hurting them when they turn the ball over like that their defense has to run back out there quickly so it's hurting them on both sides of the ball and the thing is though is they practice their offense is very similar weaver state last week ran a very fast up-tempo style of offense as well very similar so defensively they should be used to the tempo texas tech ran 87 plays last week against smu sfa against weaver state ran 88 as we've got some motion before the snap. Full starts. Number 62 offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Ryan Chambers, the left tackle. Yeah, but it's loud and noisy in here. This crowd is even more excited and pumped up with the way the Tech is playing. So it's hard to hear the snap count. And Ryan Chambers just starts a little too early that time. The back wheel for Attaway as he gets it out of his hands quickly and up across the original line of scrimmage with a six yard gain was Joshua West, a true freshman receiver. to go they've actually picked him up you gotta put him down <laughs> but the carry was made by joshua west not gus johnson that's his second rush tonight yeah gus johnson is their best running back but he put the ball on the on the ground and you can't do that not here against tech so he's not in the game third and eight and a large crowd here at Jones AT&T Stadium. Sensing a chance for some more points if they can get their defense off the field here. Long ball in the direction of Thomas. 
And interference is going to be called here against Oalua Fellini. Put it up there, and you either got to get the ball or you got to get the flag, yeah. and he got the flag. Yeah. yeah. Pretty easy call to make. We've seen Fellini make a good play earlier in this game. Pass interference. Defense, number 29. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And it's a good call because watch Fellini. Good position, but he turns his head late. Never really finds the ball. And if you make contact and you don't find the ball, you see his left hand is draped around the receiver right from the beginning. You look at his left hand. That's a penalty and an easy call as he's trying to turn and find the ball. If he hadn't gotten his left hand off of the receiver, it would have been a good play. He made a nice play with the right hand. Actually yeah. got the ball the other yeah. But the left hand it was a no-no. And more movement on the line and more flags on Both the field. Number 76 offense, five-yard penalty, first down. We're starting to see a little home field advantage. Yeah. Byron Williams. Started nine games last year as a freshman. Now here in his sophomore year. First and 15 coming from the SFA 37-yard line. And you know, Brendan, when these spread offenses, the quarterback's always not under center. So it's hard for those linemen to hear the cadence when it's this loud. Right away with time, and that ball was tipped. <laughs> That was maybe the most time that Attaway's had. And because of that, the line was a little bit farther away and a chance to get a mid on it. Yeah, and now you see Tech bringing some pressure, and the pressure is able to get there because it's long yardage situation, second and long now. So the quarterback's got to hold the ball a little bit longer to allow his receivers to get down the field. That's allowing the pressure to get there. Jackson Richards, Kerry Heider, in there defensively. Second and 15, he threw him behind Aaron Thomas. Thomas, who had five catches last week for 66 yards, starting today in place of Antonio Canna because he was the better guy in practice this week. And I tell you, when you bring pressure on a quarterback and you make him throw the ball before he wants to throw it, which is what happened on that last play, then it throws the timing off, and you see the ball got to the out before the receiver had a chance to come back to it. Third and long for the Lumberjacks. Third and loud for the Lumberjacks. Attaway to West underneath, and he got nowhere. That'll bring out the Lumberjack punting unit. Nice tackle from Austin Stewart. And Austin Stewart comes in on passing situations, and he plays kind of that nickel position for him. He's kind of that safety linebacker hybrid type, just like Terrence Bullock. Comes up with a big play and a good tackle. Austin Stewart had eight tackles last week, tied for the team lead with a fellow linebacker, if you will, and Pete Robertson. And this is the first punt from either team, and this one takes a SFA bounce and then hits the sideline. Close to the 15-yard line. And the worst field position of the game coming for Texas Tech. Time now for our Academy Sports Right Stuff player for Texas Tech. <laughs> Not hard so far, huh? Baker Mayfield, 12 of 13, 185 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, this guy has made all the right decisions, gotten the ball out of his hands, even has made some plays with his legs. Baker Mayfield picking right up where he left off last week. Worth pointing out, that was a 50-yard punt by Nick Bruno, who, as Coach J.C. Harper said, was extraordinary last week. You don't want your punter to have to be extraordinary, but he was, and he came up with a 50-yard punt there in his first chance today. Mayfield going to heave this one, but the defender fell down, and nobody could track it down. Reginald Davis was tripped up and got nowhere near that pass. Yeah, it was the right read. Went right through his progressions and took him all the way to the backside, but Davis fell down. A perfect first quarter so far. Tying a Texas Tech record with 28 points in the first quarter. Still got 90 seconds to work with here. 
He throws it to Amaro, who tries to break out of a tackle. He doesn't, but he brings the tackler with him to the 25-yard line, and they'll bring up third and five. Tackle made by Jabraylon Allen. Who had four last week. Second time we've called his name today. So they call it third and four. And the give is to Washington. And he's close, but looks short of a first down. And they do mark him about a yard short. And we'll introduce you to Ryan Ertzleben. Good job that time inside by that SFA defense. Running game really hurt him last week against Weaver State, but doing a pretty good job in spurts here against the run. They've gotten gashed a couple of times, but that time they bow up and stop him just short of first down. And a timeout taken. Timeout, Stephen F. Austin. Second and a half. By Stephen F. Austin Second. and J.C. Harper already down to one timeout left here with 24 seconds in the first quarter. The thing is, you got to make sure that you have the right personnel on the field because this tech offense and even their special teams units, they, they're liable to, to fake it at any time, so you got to be prepared. The sports show you've been waiting for is here. Introducing Crowd Goes Wild with Regis Philbin and a cast of former athletes and journalists that will talk about things you won't hear on other shows. Sports talk just got a lot more colorful. Crowd Goes Wild weekdays at 5 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. So it would appear we're about to see the first punt from Texas Tech and Ryan Berksleben. Mike Brooks jogging back will await this one. Near his own 25-yard line. But on fourth down, Erksleben standing at the 10, and he will get it away. Brooks calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 27-yard line of SFA. Erksleben doesn't get the punt too much, but did punt six times last week against SMU. Averaged 43 yards. That was a great punt there. So he doesn't get many opportunities, but he's done a good job when he's gotten the, gotten the chance. 49 yards there, so a 50-yard punt, a 49-yard punt back, and Stephen F. Austin has the ball back at the 28-yard line. As that fair catch moved up a couple of yards. <laughs> They give it inside and getting forward across the 30. As Walker on the carry, another running back not named Gus Johnson. So we have reached the end of the first quarter and Texas Tech Matched a school record with 28 points in the process. Stephen F. Austin came up with just seven. A big first quarter. SFA with the ball. When we come back to start quarter number two here in Lubbock. Welcome back to Fox College Football. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to later in the game. College football is presented by Whataburger. Try one of the Whataburger's all-time favorites 24 hours a day. And by Fred Loya Insurance. Take the 10-minute challenge and save. There was a holding penalty called against Texas Tech wide receiver Bradley Crawl. That was during the punt, so it backs them all the way up to the six-yard line here. And with Quarterback Baker Mayfield in the shotgun. He's standing at the goal line, and now some confusion here before we even play again. All checks out. We're good to go. Mayfield has been as advertised here. 10-22 to go. Second quarter, 28-7 Texas Tech. Through the middle for Ward, who tried to break through. He gets a first down and out to the 20-yard line. Good tackle made by Patrick Martin. And here they go right back to the line again. Yeah, and that empty set with five receivers makes SFA void the middle of the field. Easy throw. This is to Jakeem Grant lining up in the backfield, and he 
knifes his way through close to the 25 yard line picked up four on the play and they say the tempo is the best part of this offense that's what cliff kingsbury said and they practice it they run 160 to 180 plays during practice so the 87 plays they ran last week gets smu that's easy yeah no problem huh <laughs> they're not even breathing hard it's a day off yeah here it is to grant again and he gets across the 25 to the 27 and it'll bring up third down and three. Stop made by Donald Grant. And there you see SFA making changes. Yeah. And, and they're not just changing one or two guys. They're changing the whole defense. So they're subbing 11 for 11. Everybody get off and a whole fresh unit gets back on. And they do that when they have the chance. They only have the chance when Texas Tech makes a substitution, and yeah. then they are allowed to make a change. But if Texas Tech keeps the foot on the gas, they have to play along. A mile for a first down. Out to the 40-yard line. He is not afraid to throw it over the middle, Jason Morrow. Yeah, and he's a big target, and he's not afraid to go over the middle. He's big enough to take those shots, so not a problem for him at all. There you see 14 first downs for Texas Tech and only five for the Lumberjacks. Who we'll have seven points in this game on one touchdown that came on a one play 75 yard drive. So the sustained offense they have had hasn't ended in points. On first down. Mayfield to the sideline, high throw, and Marquez couldn't haul it in. Wanted to go up and climb the ladder. Yeah, that's the one that got away from him. Just run that stop round outside. They try to sell the go round for Marquez. And he stops. He's open, actually, but the ball just sails on Mayfield. That's one where he's got to try to take something off of it. He's going down the sideline again. He's got Marquez behind the D. Texas Tech has scored again. 60-yard strike. Does that make up for the high throw on the previous play? Yeah, you, you go right back to him. He's got single coverage out there. And... He's working not even against another defensive back. SFA is down in numbers. They had a wide receiver playing defensive back, and Marquez just ran right by him. He can move, that's for sure. He got out there. No one could catch him. No one could stay with him. The extra point is good from Ryan Buston, and the lead is now 35-7 for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. A 94-yard drive capped off by a big strike to Brad Marquez. Time now for our BMW scoring drive, and there you see it, the 60-yard touchdown catch by Brad Marquez, the longest strike thrown in the illustrious career of Baker Mayfield here in week two as a walk-on true freshman. Yeah, and if you think playing corner is easy, think again. Watch right here. SFA's got a wide receiver playing corner, Brent Mitchum, and watch him just get taken right off the line of scrimmage, and it's an easy throw and catch for Mayfield to Marquez. That's a receiver that they threw in there, and actually, Sylvester on here, my 82. Yeah, actually, that's Robert Sylvester, a wide receiver. They throw him in, and he just gets burnt just like the other guys. Here, you go see if they can catch him. <laughs> a chance for a run back at DJ Ward. Wrestle down just after he crossed the 15-yard line. And there's Brad Marquez. And how about, I mean, his eyes just had to light up when he looked across and saw another guy, a receiver, playing bump and run coverage on him. <laughs> his eyes probably got his biggest quarters and just, like, just throw it up. This is a guy who only started one game last season, suffered a, a season-ending injury against WVU and came yeah. back. And you saw Sylvester there, number 82. I feel for him. <laughs> I've, I've been in that position before as a defensive back, so to just get thrown in that position and expect to get your hands on a guy, not easy. First down here and a poorly thrown ball. 
got in and out of the hands of Mike Brooks. And it brings up a good point, JC. One of the big differences between FCS and FBS is not necessarily the way they play, but the FBS guys are typically bigger, stronger, and faster. Yeah, and, and they have more scholarships, so they have more depth. So now you don't see a wide receiver having to just jump in at corner. They have another corner to plug in, and that's one of the, the disadvantages that they have. And there's a pass in the backfield that Fred Ford didn't know was coming. Tech does dive on the ball, but they rule it incomplete. 85 scholarships for FBS schools, 63 scholarships for FCS schools. Texas Tech, not everybody has, gives out all 85. Texas Tech is at the max 85. We know that because that's the reason Baker Mayfield doesn't have one yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got a feeling that they're going to find one for that young man pretty quickly somewhere. Somebody's out of luck. <laughs> yeah, somebody's, somebody's not going to be happy. Third and 10 from the 18, and a timeout taken by Cliff Kingsbury and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. It's their first timeout that he has taken here tonight. Comes with just under eight minutes to go in the first half. And on third and 10. Gives F SFA time to try and figure out how they can advance this ball. Ten yards on third down so far tonight. They're just one for five, and that's that's a football game right there. When you can't get, keep the drive alive, you're off the field, and you give Texas Tech back the ball, and we've seen what they've done with it. Yeah, not good. Third downs are huge in every game, but especially this game for SFA, like you were just talking about, Brendan, because they need to continue to, to move the chains, get more downs, and keep the clock moving. Now, you know, as we know, time of possession in, in this day and age is overblown because Tech can score so quickly, and we saw that last week with Baylor, and I know Baylor scored 70 today, so time of possession is not really indicative of, key, of keeping the score down anymore, but at least it's keeping your defense off the field and let those guys get a blow. So third and ten for Brady Attaway and the SFA Lumberjacks. Attaway is 7 for 18, so they'll keep it on the ground. Fred Ford had a blocker, but he comes up short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth and three, but a penalty. 75 offense, 10-yard penalty, third down. I called it a block, he called it a hold. <laughs> I think he wins. He's cause, right. Because it's coming back. <laughs> Penalties decline. And actually, okay. they're, they're going to decline it and uh, force FS SFA to punt the ball. And Nick Bruno will get another chance to kick it away. Sedale Foster is back at his own 35. Sedale Foster didn't return punts last year, return kicks. Got hurt returning a punt in the first quarter of last week's game against SMU, but came back in the second quarter. Here he is from the 35. He nearly split through the middle. Gets up close to the 45 as we check in with Leslie McCaslin. Well, guys, with this Tech offense, you see a lot of different players getting in the action. Against SMU, they had 11 different receivers catching a ball. Here tonight, we're only midway through the second quarter. They already have five different receivers that have caught a ball, and three of the different guys have caught touchdowns. That's the way they like it. They like to move the ball around. And offensive coordinator Sonny Cumbie said, because of that, player management is a big part of our job. We have to make sure these receivers stay focused and hungry even when they aren't, get, aren't getting the ball every single down. Yeah, where their philosophy is stretch the field horizontally, horizontally and vertically. That makes the defense cover every bit of the field. First down, Mayfield will get out of bounds after picking up two. Baker Mayfield, the ball carrier. Pressure came from Jordan Burton. That forced First Mayfield to the sideline. A guy who is a walk-on, true freshman, believed to be the first one ever to start a quarterback for a BCS automatic qualifying school. But he is not your typical walk-on, as he airs one out again too far for Eric Ward. This is a quarterback who had offers other places. Places like Washington State, Rice, New Mexico, FAU. He wanted to go to TCU, was waiting at an offer for them. That never came. They went elsewhere. He'll get a chance to see TCU on Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. And 
not to mention that SFA offered him as well. They wanted to try to steal him, but he chose to walk on that tap. Yeah, those are just the big schools. Everybody wanted him. Yeah. He had the confidence to come here, and he throws it to Jason Morrow over the middle again, and the big guy down inside the tent. And there they go, right back to the line of scrimmage. Another catch for Jason Morrow. Yeah, just works the middle of the field, works those linebackers, get, get behind those guys, and now he just runs away from everybody. And we have a lumberjack down back towards midfield. A 47-yard little pitch and catch with Jason Morrow. But now is 142 yards on the day as we take a look again at that throw over the middle to Jason Morrow. We've said yeah. that a few times. Yeah, works the middle of the field. Look, just outruns the linebacker, Allen, right there. And then the ball is just an easy throw over the middle for Baker Mayfield. But again, you got Jason Morrow that's that big. He runs away from linebackers, and he overpowers defensive backs. Let's go to Laura McKeven for a Fox College football game break. All right, guys, some SEC action. South Carolina at Georgia. Fourth quarter, Georgia up 34 to 30. Bulldogs quarterback Aaron Murray hits Justin Scott Wesley downfield on the sideline, and Scott Wesley turns it up for an 85-yard touchdown. Bulldogs up 41 to 30. Thank you, Laura. Darren Robinson was the one down on that play for SFA. He is up. He is off the field. And Texas Tech is threatening again. First and goal from the eight-yard line. And it's Adel, or excuse me, Mayfield, in and out of the hands of Reginald Davis, who had a touchdown catch last week against SMU. Yeah, but what about that fake, the play action? I think everybody thought that the running back had the ball, even us up here. I mean, he, he carried that fake so long that I, I absolutely thought the ball was with the running back, and then he pulls it out of there. And he was so casual about yeah, it, too. Yeah. This time he did hand the ball off to Kenny Williams trying to find a lane. And he found four lumberjacks after a pickup of two yards. And it'll bring up third down. And here comes the, the mass substitution for SFA. You know, and I give those guys a lot of credit. After that first quarter, they settled down. You know, now they gave up a big play the series before when they had a, a wide receiver playing corner. But they've continued to play hard and a lot of effort. Just over six minutes to go in the half. 35-7 Texas Tech. Baker Mayfield pumps and throws a little too high. Looking for the big guy Amaro again. Yeah. And that's another one that got away from Mayfield. And he knows right there that that should have been a touchdown. Just a little more patience and take a little bit of something off of it. Everything doesn't have to be a fastball. Right here, just a little patience and Amaro comes wide open. Just puts a little too much on and it gets away from it. And that's something, JC, that'll come yeah. the more and more he gets involved. And, and those are the types of things that Cliff Kingsbury talks about that there's room for improvement. Flags fly before a 23 yarder from Ryan Buston. The kick was good, Post but it won't matter. Number 43 offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. And they get a 28 yarder as the penalty called against Richards. Ryan Buston, seven for eight in his career from this range. Two for two last week. Kicked the 27-yarder and a 43-yarder. This is his first attempt. First attempt for either team today. And three more points added on by Ryan Buston to the Texas Tech lead. It grows to 38-7 with six minutes remaining here in the first half. And it could have been more if Jay Samaro was 6-7 instead of 6-5. Yeah, or, or if Baker Mayfield just has a little bit more patience and takes a little bit off of that fastball. SFA got away with one there. They're happy holding them to three points on that drive. 
91 second drive, seven plays, 46 minutes in. Coming up at halftime, we'll check back with Laura McKeeman and Tony Banks in the studio. There's an upset in Florida. TCU has an injury scare at quarterback. TCU coming to Lubbock on Thursday. And of course, we'll get you some top 25 scores and highlights. That's coming up at halftime. Yeah, and that's a good point, too, Brendan, because in the second half, if Tech is up big, does Coach Kingsbury take some of these guys out of the game, rest their legs, get ready for that Thursday night game? That's a big game in conference play on a short turnaround. And when we asked him that, he was very noncommittal, as you might expect, that we're focused on winning this game, and, and he's a coach, and that's what they say. But the question becomes, what do you do with Baker Mayfield in this situation? That is unique, as this will be a touchback for SFA and Mike Brooks taking it in. Yeah. The number one thing they need for Mayfield is reps. Yeah, and, and I don't think you take Baker Mayfield out, because he's a young guy. He needs the reps. He needs the looks. You want him to get as much game action as possible. Now, some of the other guys, you may think about resting some of those other guys if this game gets away from SFA. Again, they're getting TCU not only next week opening Big 12 play, and that's a big game and an important game, but it's on Thursday, yeah. which adds the extra element. Last week, they had an extra day because they played Friday last week and playing today, but now they've got the short week. It's a short week, a, a big game. game, a tough game. You want to be fresh, so if this game gets, gets away from SFA, I would think that they would start to rest some guys. That away, hands it off. And this is Gus Johnson, his second rush of the game. And he got through for eight yards on first down. As we take a look at that schedule coming up for Texas Tech, we've got TCU, Texas State, and Kansas. Of course, the biggest one there is the one we've been talking about this coming Thursday night against TCU. Huge game to start Big 12 play for. TCU ranked 24th before this week as Gus Johnson gets the ball on back-to-back -back plays. He got cracked and he didn't get the first down. Bring up third and about two. Micah Alway with a good stop on Gus Johnson as they try and get him more involved again. Yeah, well, they have to because he's their best running back. Yeah, he fumbled the ball, but you need to get him some more touches, get him back in the game because he's a threat. And he throws it behind Ward. Did he haul it in? They say yes as he was stumbling back near that sideline. He was mostly down before he made that basket catch and tiptoeing near the sidelines in the process with his heel. Yeah, that, that back shoulder fade. They call that a back shoulder fade. D.J. Ward able to stop it and make that catch. So first and 10 for the 42 for the Lumberjacks of Stephen F. Austin. And he gets around the outside, taken down hard. Olalua Felimi and Marco just too short of a first down and an eight-yard pickup on first down. And, and a good block out there by the receiver, Tyler Boyd, that allowed Mike Brooks to get to the outside. And on those quick, quick bubble screens, all they're looking for is four yards, and that's a win. That time they got more. They go right back to it, bobbled and dropped by Mike Brooks this time. That see him time. saying that's on him. Yeah, my, my bad. Trying to run before he makes the catch. You can't do two before you do one. And the first thing you got to do is make the catch. Mike Brooks made nine catches last week for Brady Attaway. But we've talked a lot about how many times Texas Tech threw the ball 60. Attaway threw it last week 62 times. Just only completed 37 and happened to throw three picks, which he has not done today. Still... Texas Tech brings the pressure. And a diving attempt by Mike Brooks comes up empty. Go to him on three consecutive plays. Yeah. Hoping for a little magic. And instead, Attaway is on his way to the sidelines on fourth down. Yeah. Could have been a more accurate throw there, but I still think it might have been catchable. You can see Brooks right there in the slot. That's a catchable ball. Mike Brooks needs to come up with that catch right there. Attaway put it where he needed to, and they just haven't made the plays when the plays are there for him. Brooks, the senior, all Southland Conference honorable mention, as this one is kicked over the head of Sedale Foster, and they'll pick it up at the four. It looked like they could have let that go a little bit deeper, but they'll take it inside the five yeah. and give the long field on a 46-yard punt. 
for Baker Mayfield to go with four minutes and 12 seconds left in the half. Not that that's going to stop him. <laughs> yeah. The time is not really a factor with Mayfield in, in this Tech offense. What do you make of the defense so far from Tech, albeit against Stephen F. Austin? They're trying to clean things up. They yeah. gave up 21 points last week, but they haven't really given up anything aside from one big trick play yeah. from SFA. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a great job against the run and doing a good job of getting to, to the Attaway and making him throw the ball probably before he wants to throw it, and the coverage has been pretty good down the field. So when the pressure's there and the coverage working together it makes it tough. Mayfield from his own end zone. He throws a bullet up top for Jakeem Grant. And that may have been a catchable ball as well. Yeah, and the thing there is you want to get that ball down. Jakeem Grant is only 5'6". If that's a moral, it's probably a completion. But Jakeem Grant, and again, went right through his hands. A ball that probably should have been caught, but could it have been thrown a little bit better? Absolutely. Second and 10. Intended for Grant again, and that one was into no man's land. Alligator arms. The mattress firm all access update. We see Chase Amaro on what he's done tonight. 142 yards already. We're not through a half yet. And again, we've been talking about it all night. Such a mismatch problem for the defense because he's so big, 6'5, 260, but he runs like a wide receiver catches like a wide receiver and in the run game he blocks like a tight end so how do you match up with a guy like that SFA hasn't figured it out yet Marvin Gray outside linebacker for SFA is down on the field getting some medical attention and JC let's check in about the progress of Baker Mayfield the list of things with what he did wrong from last week was the ball touched the ground too much he threw some that easily could have been picked. He stared some things in, and the footwork being a constant battle. How has he improved on some of those things tonight? You know, I think, uh, obviously, he hasn't put the ball on the ground like he did last week. Uh, his footwork looks to, looks to be better. Uh, of course, he hasn't gotten a, a lot of pressure, but when he has gotten pressure, he's used his feet to get away from it. I think the only thing tonight is he's got to work on his touch a little better on some of those throws, puts a little too much heat on everything, and sometimes they get away from it. He's under pressure in his own end zone. He escapes and gets toward the sidelines, and he gets up diving for every yard, and he may have just gotten that first down. He did. He got to the 15-yard line and moved the chains. I mean, great decision to pull it down, and then look at the, the determination. Great job of stretching out and getting that, getting the ball over the first down marker. He needed, awareness. He needed 10 and he got 11. That extra stretch and here comes the pressure. He just got it off. Hit as he throws. Word! Couldn't haul it in. Tried to go over the sho shoulder. Mayfield took a shot and Ward nearly tracked it down. Yeah, again, I think another catchable ball. Even though he's getting a lot of pressure, look where this ball is. It's a catchable ball. Goes right between the hands of Eric Ward. Now, he's he's probably got the best hands on the team, so that's not going to happen too many times. But again, that's not on Baker Mayfield. Uh -huh. Poise shown by a walk-on true freshman under pressure as he goes to the far sideline this time and another first down picked up by the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And I know we're talking a lot about this Mayfield kid, but that right there shows a lot of maturity. He went all the way through his progressions that time and went, came all the way to the backside for the completion. First and 10 from the 26. And Sedell Foster. Kind of nonchalantly got to the 30-yard line. Or excuse me, Mayfield kept the ball there. Yeah. And for this SFA defense, what they have to do is just keep the ball in front of them. Just don't give up the big play and make Mayfield and this Texas Tech offense have to put plays together in order to score. 10, 11, 12 play drives. Just don't give them something easy over the top. 453 yards on offense. For Texas Tech, still three minutes to go in the half. A spin move by Jakeem Grant, and he has some room. A first down and more as he gets close to midfield. He got away from Jordan Burton with an empty move and a 20-yard pickup. Yeah, you got to make these tackles. Look right here. Just a shoulder tackle, trying to blow a guy up, and then you miss the tackle. You make that tackle, it's a short game. DeAndre Washington, back-to-back -back first downs as he closes in on the 30-yard line. 
to see maybe some of the cumulative effect of this offense. Yeah. No way for them to slow it down. Remember, SFA used their timeouts very early in this first half. And we've got another injury on the Stephen F. Austin defense. 19-yard pickup there as we take another look. Yeah, just an inside run here, just an inside zone read, and another missed tackle there, and another missed tackle there. The first one was by Burton again, who missed the tackle on Jakeen Grant on the play before. And that's the thing. With an offense like this, you have to wrap up and you have to make the tackles because they're going to they're gonna put you in situations where you're in space and you got to make those tackles. And if you don't, they turn in the big game. No, I'm not saying that this is what just happened with Jordan Burton, but there's a lot of people that are trying to figure out how they can stop defenders from laying down and whether they're faking injuries or not. It's a cramp. That's the only way with no timeouts to slow down this offense. Yeah. Uh, and we've seen it a few times. And, and right now, it's perfectly legal. It, there's nothing against that because you don't know when a guy is really hurt or when a guy is really cramping up. So they're using that to their advantage. And we've heard other teams around the country, even in the NFL, doing it. Well, and Cliff Kingsbury said it's been happening since he was the quarterback. Yeah. What's the option? There's talk of maybe you have to sit out five plays when you go down with an injury as Mayfield has lots of room down the right side. He cut back into the field and took a shot after getting a first down to the 10-yard line, a 21-yard pickup, and he wasn't getting out of bounds. Yeah, but you like the competitiveness and the toughness, but you got to be smart, too. And that's what they're going to talk about with him as we see Maddox now down on the ground, whether he's cramping up. Or, or really injured, we don't know at this point. But going back to Baker Mayfield, you got to be smart too. I know you're young, you're excited, you're tough, you're, you, you know, you want to compete, but you want to stay healthy too. And that's the biggest thing. And you can see right here, does a great job. Nobody's open, quick decision, but you got to get out of bounds. Stay healthy. Look at those unnecessary shots right there. And he gets up from this one. But you may not always get up from all of those shots. You want your quarterback to be healthy. Get out of bounds. And you would think a guy who may only be playing because Michael Brewer couldn't stay healthy. Right. Might you understand that. Yeah, you don't want to get yourself hurt and give Brewer another chance. Michael Brewer, who reports out of Austin that he's going to see a back specialist to try and get back on the field next week. He played at Lake Travis High School, the same place that has produced Baker Mayfield and a lot of other quality college football players. But Michael Brewer has yet to get back on the field. He was supposed to be the starter, at least see competition from Davis Webb. And then this Mayfield guy showed up in July. <laughs> Ruined all the players. Yeah, yeah. Didn't show up until the second session of the summer. First and goal from the nine. Mayfield will take another hit here as he falls forward for a gain of one. Second and goal. Davis Webb was the guy that was recruited out of high school. Another true freshman. Cliff Kings produced Baker Mayfield and a lot of other quality college football players. But Michael Brewer has yet to get back on the field. He was supposed to be the starter, at least see competition from Davis Webb. And then this Mayfield guy showed up in July. <laughs> Ruined all the players. Yeah, yeah. Didn't show up until the second session of the summer. First and goal from the nine. Mayfield will take another hit here as he falls forward for a gain of one. <laughs> Second and goal. Davis Webb was the guy that was recruited out of high school. Another true freshman. Cliff Kingsbury knew before last week that he was going to have to start a true freshman at quarterback. The question was, which one? Last true freshman to start a quarterback, Texas Tech, was in 1984. hook up with Brad Marquez yeah. and a flag thrown as another shot delivered on Baker Mayfield who pops right back up and wants to get back to the line. Speaking of true freshman, that's Rodney Timmons. Yeah. And look at just hands to the face right there. 
I mean, that's right there is part of that targeting rule. They don't call them for that. They just call the personal foul, but you can't do that. On first and goal from the four, DeAndre Washington does what he can, but picks up only three. So a chance here in the final minute of the half to punch another one in for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Washington again. No stopping it this time. Touchdown, Texas Tech. had the first two rushing touchdowns and now DeAndre Washington gets in on the act. Yeah, and I think this SFA defense is just getting wearing down. They're just tired. The tempo is too fast, faster than even they expected, and they're coming at them with too many weapons. Ryan busted on for the extra point again. And with 47 seconds left in the first half, it is Texas Tech 45 and Stephen F. Austin 7. Another Long drive in terms of yardage, 96 yards on 12 plays. Took him three minutes and 45 seconds. Baker Mayfield is thrown for 367. Five different players have combined to rush for 156 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. Wow, look at that. 9.1 yards of play already in the first half. 523 yards and 45 points. What about 57 plays? Wow. That tempo, and that's what I'm saying. The tempo, I think, is has worn this SFA a defense down. Both units, because they've been subbing two units. I think they're both gassed right now. Look at heads hanging, guys breathing hard. And that's what that conditioning that, that Cliff Kingsbury was talking to us about, how much emphasis they put on conditioning, because Texas Tech, they look as fresh as they did in that first drive. In talking about the tempo and the way the offense plays, Cliff Kingsbury said it started as the air raid. I told the kids, if you're good enough, they'll give us our own name. And he has pushed the tempo again tonight. And this one is pushed out of the back of the end zone. A 45-7 lead, 47 seconds remaining here in the first half. That was Kramer Fife, by the way, who only does kickoffs. Ryan Buston takes care of the field goals and extra points, but Kramer Fife with the boot. And eight kickoffs last week that amounted in five touchbacks and three that had the offense starting inside the 20. And if you're at SFA right now, just, just run the ball. Just try to get the clock, run the clock out, get in the locker room and try to regroup or at least let your guys take a blow. Can Brady Attaway and company get anything going here at the end of the half? Answer is no on first down. Pressure came from Pete Robertson in a hurry. Lost three yards, bringing up second and 13. Attaway just nine for 22 for only 69 yards through the air. So they keep it on the ground with Gus Johnson. Who slammed down at the 25-yard line, picking up two, still third and 11 coming. Maybe. Eight seconds to go in the half. And no hurry by Brady Attaway. 45-7 is our score after the first two quarters in J.C., what we expected from Texas Tech, and they have delivered. Cliff Kingsbury making his debut tonight here in Lubbock is down with our own Leslie McCaskill. Well, Coach, you give just one punt in the first half, and you give up just one touchdown. Anything you didn't like from your guys in the first half? Yeah, just too many penalties. That's something we've talked about all season and all camp, and then we got to cut those out. But I think the defense has been playing great against a really good offense. What do you tell them about playing with this kind of lead going into the second half? Yeah, we got a lot of young guys that need work. Um, we got a, a quick turnaround next week, obviously, with TCU coming up, who's going to be the best team we've played. So I uh, got to keep it going. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. That's the end of the first half with the score Texas Tech 45, SFA 7. When we return, we'll go to the studio and join Laura McKeeman and Tony Banks for the Fox College Football Halftime Show. It's presented by Arby.
Welcome back to Fox College Football. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to later in the game. Well, yeah, that's what you want. Yeah, I mean, in this second half, you don't even care about, care about the score if you're SFA. Just want your guys to play hard. And like he told us, uh, Brendan, in the conference call, he just wants his guys to get better. I mean, I really don't think that they thought they were going to come in and win anyway. He just said, I just want to see improvement. And that's probably what he's looking for in the second half. Let's just show some improvement. Let's get better and then worry about next week. Well, even you and I talked to Brady Attaway before the game. He was just talking about execution. We want to execute our plays. He hasn't done that tonight. And so in the second half, they're going to look for some improvement, some execution, and they've got some time. As you take a look at Attaway's numbers and only 69 yards passing, he's got some time. They're trying to get ready for conference play. And in the Southland Conference, it's a little bit different. They don't have their first Southland Conference game until October the 12th when they visit Southeastern Louisiana. So they've got some time to get things together. They're going to use a lot of personnel, and they're going to try and make things work here to get some improvement here in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. And they're not going to see anything like what they're seeing tonight against Texas Tech. Just offense, tempo, and just talent and skill level and speed. So if they just continue to play hard, don't worry about the scoreboard. Just continue to play hard, compete, battle, and get better. I'm sure the head coach would be happy with that. JC, we pondered about the substitution that Texas Tech may make. Well, Taylor Simek, the backup kicker, just kicked the ball off in the second half. So that may set the tone for what we're about to see <laughs> here as he puts it out the back of the end zone. Yeah, might see a lot of the backups in the second half. In that first half, 91 plays were run, 57 of them by Texas Tech. And a total of 690 yards combined between the two teams. Yeah. And, and that's another sign right there that we may see a lot of the backups. LaRaven Clark, the starting left tackle, getting his tape cut off <laughs> already. So <laughs> I think his night is over. But it'll be the Texas Tech defense that comes out onto the field first. And Brady Attaway. Trying to put some Texas Tech defenders run around the field. And here's the give on a little push off to Mike Brooks. And he turned the corner and is pushed out of bounds on first down. Close to another first down, but about two yards shy. Just come out with a little misdirection. Just trying to see if that Tech defense is blowing a little too quickly. They got a good gain out of it. Side. He was looking for Thomas, and he couldn't haul it in. Yeah, that's what we've seen a lot tonight from these receivers from SFA. They've got an opportunity to make the catch. Even if you get tackled after the catch, make the catch. And that time, Aaron Thomas, the ball just goes through his hands, too. We've seen a lot of receivers in that first half for SFA that that very thing happened to them. They just let the ball go through their hands. Aaron Thomas had a big week last week. Five catches for 66 yards and a touchdown. Earned himself a spot in the starting lineup today. But Aaron Thomas has one catch for eight yards in this game. And finding a little bit of space at a first down is Gus Johnson. As they try and get him a little more involved, that's just his sixth rush. And he had 10 yards before that one, where he moved the chains. So it'll be first and 10 from the 37 for Stephen F. Austin. Gus Johnson last year. Rushed for 954 yards, the most for an F SFA player since the year 2000. And there's a violent collision. Micah always stepped up. And a one-yard gain as Cunningham got taken down. Yeah, you got to be careful throwing those short crossers against zone defense because when the defense is playing zone, all eyes are on the ball, and now you're running your receiver right into the next guy. And Micah Hall had a big hit, just didn't wrap up. Johnson again, and he was wrapped up pretty quickly, picked up about two or three. So brings up third down. You can see that the tempo for SFA to start this second half is very slow, very methodical. 
just let the clock run. And I think that's kind of their game plan is, you know, let's try to shorten this game as much as we can and get out of here. They empty the backfield on third down. Gus Johnson off the field altogether. Pump and then a screen over to Brooks, who slipped the defender and got close but didn't get it before getting out of bounds. It'll bring up fourth down, but he should have been stopped well before that. But again, when you're playing zone defense like Texas Tech is right now, you get a lot of guys running to the ball because everybody is seeing the ball thrown. All eyes are on the ball, and when it's thrown, everybody breaks to it. So you may make one guy miss, but there's always the next guy coming, and when you got a long way to go, it's tough. So the punt to you, it comes out. And Texas Tech will let this one bounce. And it's into the end zone. There was a chance to try and keep it. There is a flag on the play. Right at the 25-yard line. 56-yard punt. They had Jeremy Reynolds back there to receive that punt. Not Sedale Foster. After the kick, personal foul. Number 26 to the receiving team. Can it be forced half the distance from the 20? First down. That's on the punter. It's actually on John White. 45 7 Texas Tech is on top. So who's more refreshing? Here in Lubbock, Texas, it's a 45-7 lead for Texas Tech over Stephen F. Austin. Let's go to Laura McKeeman for a Fox College football game break. All right, Texas at BYU, guys, and Paul Lasique with a 10-yard TD run in the second quarter. That puts them up 24 to 14 over Texas. And then now, second half is on the way, 27 to 14. BYU up on top of Texas, guys. Thanks, Laura. What well, was a 46-yard punt and a 35-yard return by Carlos Thompson that gives Texas Tech the football into SFA territory at the 46-yard line, first and 10. And he just kept on moving. Davis Webb, high throw, and overthrows Derek Edwards. Yeah, just a timing throw there. That's one that Davis Webb knows he should make. And that's why they have him in the game, because you've got to give him some game experience completely different than practice. Derek Edwards was a high school state medalist in the high jump. Didn't help him there. This one thrown out of bounds. Played his high school football in Brenham, Texas. Davis Webb from Prosper High School. We've heard a whole lot about Lake Travis with Baker Mayfield and Michael Brewer and how well that system has prepared them to play college football. Davis Webb, well respected coming out of high school as well. Six foot four, 195 pounds. And checking things at the line. Which we didn't see a whole lot of from Baker Mayfield in the first half. Rolling out, looking long, down the field, under thrown again. And that one could have been picked as well. Yeah, that, that's not a good throw right there. Not a good decision by Davis Webb. A lot of room in front of him where he could have probably run for the first down. And that's just not a good decision. But again, that comes with experience and playing time. Know when to be able to force a ball and when not to. Very lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Trey Valier was the one who broke it up, bringing up fourth down and bringing out the punting unit. And instead of Ryan Berksleben, it's Taylor Simonek again. Fair catch signal with the ball behind him. That's down at the one yard line. D. Paul with a tremendous stop there for Texas Tech, a 45-yard punt. And that's what you're taught as a gunner. You, you go behind the return man and then try to find the ball. He's in the end zone and supposed to reestablish yourself back in the field of play before you down it. I think they let him get away with one. He had one foot down, but not completely reestablished. They let him get away with one, but as a gunner, that's what you're taught. You gotta go down, 
and go behind the gunner for that very reason in case the ball goes over his head. So that makes it a little bit more difficult for Stephen F. Austin, who has only scored one touchdown in this game. It was a 75-yard pass in the first quarter by wide receiver Tyler Boyd, hooking up with Mike Brooks. And powering his way through, picking up five on first down is Jamarcus Walker. Again, Attaway finished with 83 yards through the air. Tyler Boyd threw that 175-yard <laughs> touchdown strike. <laughs> Trying to start a quarterback controversy, huh? <laughs> Minden overthrown, and again, that ball now, yeah, was that could have been live. It is a safety. And, and yeah, yeah, and it was thrown back. We saw it a couple of times during the first half. We thought they could have been a live ball, but yeah. they called it incomplete. This one they let play out. And it is a safety. Tack on two more for Tech. Yeah. And that's the right call. And that's a good call because that ball was thrown backwards. So it's a lateral. So it's a live ball. Watch where he releases the ball and watch where it lands. He releases it about a yard deep in the end zone, and you can see it goes backwards. So that's a live ball. That's why it's a safety, and that's that's the right call there. We just reviewed it. Now the officials will, and presumably will find what we just did. Even if it's close, there's no chance they overturn that. You've got to find that conclusive be, evidence right. that it was not backwards. And from what we saw, it was close enough to be considered backwards. Yeah. The ruling on the field was a safety. And they'll take a quick look at this one to make sure. But Joe Minden, the sophomore, getting his first action of the season tonight here in the second half. You can see where his feet are when he releases the ball and then where the ball lands. And it's pretty close. But it looks like that ball is going backwards. I'm with you. And it, yeah. Safety. It is confirmed. It is a safety and a 47 7 lead for Texas Tech on a miscue by backup quarterback Joe Minden. And a long night for J.C. Harper, yeah. the head coach of Stephen F. Austin. And to make matters worse, now they've got to punt the ball to Texas Tech and give their offense the ball back. So not only do you give up a safety and, and two points, now you got to give them the ball, too. SFA came eight hours to get to Lubbock from Nagadocious, Texas. The oldest town in Texas. As they will give the ball back to that guy, Davis Webb, who has had a rough start so far to his collegiate career, but it is just that. It is his first action in a college game here in the home opener. His team's up big, but the yeah. guys that are on the field are still playing hard. Yeah, and, and I don't know if for a typical freshman, you can kind of make those excuses, but after what, what Baker Mayfield... <laughs> the bar's been set a little higher. The, but here, the bar has been set a little higher, so you don't get those. You're a freshman, so we understand those mistakes because Mayfield set that bar pretty high last week and in the first half of this one. Web six for ten so far. And SFA is going to take a timeout here before they pump the ball. And so some confusion on the sidelines, no doubt, leads to a timeout here. As they had plenty of time before calling that timeout. From America's number one pregame show comes the all-new Fox Football Daily, featuring an all-star lineup of experts and NFL legends. Get everything you love on Sunday, every day of the week. Fox Football Daily, weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern on America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1. So a safety thrown by Joe Minden out of the side of the end zone. And now Texas Tech getting the ball back here. On a free kick from the 20. Back to grab this one is Carlos Thompson. And Thompson has a lane, has some speed, gets around one. The punter's back there. Thompson takes it to the 10, barrel down the five-yard line. Look at him go. 73 yards. Little excitement out of the 
guy who doesn't normally get to do this. Yeah. I mean, he's excited. Watch him make some guys miss. Muffs it there, picks it up, and then watch him make a couple guys miss and a great cut right there. And now he turns the speed on. But watch at the end of this. Watch him just blow his shoulder trying to run over the putter. <laughs> oh, how about Thompson? Not a big guy. Just trying to run over somebody there at the end. He's gassed. Somebody, yeah, give him some water. Yeah. He deserves it twice. As he made these run backs exciting. And there's a spin move and a touchdown. Watch these moves. Watch how many guys he makes miss. Watch the spin move right over that step right there, and then the spin move. Oh, my goodness. We call that handing out minuses, because those missed tackles are minuses on the grade sheet tomorrow. Quentin White, my goodness. Jordan Burton tried to trip him. Stuck the leg out. Still couldn't get him. <laughs> Breaking ankles out there. Quentin White. Extra point is good. It's a 54-7 lead. Here, over eight minutes remaining in the third quarter. And all smiles on the Texas Tech sidelines. There is an excitement around this team, a youth movement with the players, with the coaching staff, and bringing in those guys. Leslie talked about it earlier in the game. Cliff Kingsbury leading the charge. He got to assemble his staff, and he brought back six guys, including himself, that have degrees from Texas Tech. Yeah, and again, like we talked about early in this game, I mean, it brings a lot of credibility because these guys understand that these coaches have been where they are. They know the, all the, the, the things that they're going through. They understand the tradition, the history, and they've all bought into this program. And you see, those are all coaches that are on this staff right now that have graduated from Texas Tech. And Cliff Kingsbury was quick to point out, not only did they all play here, they all graduated. Yeah. And so they know what it was like, and there are no excuses on this team that the academic portion is taken care of. Absolutely. Sonny Cumbie. Yeah, and they're Sonny Cumbie, like you're saying, a, a quarterback, but they understand, and the standard that all these players have to live up to because, again, they're from here. They understand it. Kingsbury said coaching changes are tough on everybody, but the fact that they all want to be here made it a little bit easier for these guys to buy in. Yeah, and some of those guys on that list had had a chance to go other places for a lot more money, but this is home for them. One guy that's not from Tech, Matt Wallerstead, the defensive coordinator, is the fifth defensive coordinator in the last five years here in Texas, so no doubt some need for stability as this one kicked out of the end zone and will give the ball back. Stephen F. Austin. Wallerstead came over with that man, Kingsbury, from Texas A&M last year, where he was a linebacker coach. It's been four years as the defensive coordinator for Air Force before that. But again, young guys, a lot of energy. And we saw Cliff, Ki Cliff Kingsbury before the game. He was throwing to his receivers to warm them up. These guys, they run through drills with them. They work out with them as much as they can. They do as much as a team. And there is there's an energy around this team. Yeah, I mean, they're all young. They're all young guys that are still in shape. They work out, and they work out with these guys. And the other thing about it is they can get out, and they can show. They can show these guys what they're talking about. They can give them an example, unlike some older guys. They can show some film from a few years ago and show them how they did it back then. Tripped up is Fred Ford on first down. <laughs> That's Micah Awe. Yeah, he's had a good game. Always been all over the field. Yeah, he's a guy that gets regular reps. He plays behind Sam McLaughlin, but tonight they've called his name more than a lot of guys. As the pass is complete to Marquise Mosley. On second and seven, he'll come up a yard shy. And you know, that's one thing that this Texas Tech defense has done a great job of tonight, and that's tackling. Tackling in space, they haven't missed a lot of tackles, and we talked about that earlier with SFA. They've missed way too many tackles, which lead to big plays, but this Texas Tech defense has done a good job of wrapping guys up in space all night. Third and one. And Ford gets behind the blocker, and they try and push. Boy, that's a pile. 
And at the end of it, he's got himself a first down. He had the entire roster on his back. Ford, 6'2", 220. And he had a lot of guys on his shoulder. Bring him first down. At the SFA, 39-yard line. Some defensive leaders in this game. For Texas Tech, Trey Porter came out of the gates on fire. Finished with six tackles all solo. From behind him, Micah Awe has four. The defense has been spread around as well for Texas Tech. As first down leads to four. And we've got an injured Red Raider down on the field. Andre Ross. Sophomore transfer from Navarro College. With three tackles last week. Getting some attention here. But again, some of those defensive leaders. Awe has four tackles. Ross, that guy right there, also has four tackles. Pete Robertson with three. Four players have two tackles. A ton have one. So defense is getting contributions all over as well. Yeah, they've spread it out. Hyder, we've seen Hyder with the big play. And Terrence Bullitt, Austin Stewart, all those guys have contributed. And again, they're having fun. When we talked to the defensive coordinator, Wallace, that he said, you know, they're going to be aggressive. He's going to turn these guys loose. They like the system. They enjoy being able to just be free and go make plays. And last year and in the years prior to this year, they weren't as aggressive. And players like when you just turn them loose and let them go. We saw that accomplish five sacks last week. Being aggressive and no doubt having some fun at SMU's expense. They throw to the far sideline. Complete to Marquise Mosley. Shy of the first down. Time now for our Academy Sports Right Stuff Player of the Game for Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, how about Mike Brooks? That long touchdown catch off of the trick play, the reverse pass, and Mike Brooks is the guy that caught the pass and was able to go down the field and score. Not a lot of positives for this offense tonight, but that was one of them. Third and two coming up. Brady Attaway started the game and now holding the clipboard. Here they come again. Had to get it off quickly and a nice catch and a violent tackle. Oh, he couldn't hang on to it. And we do have a flag on the play as well. Jeremy Reynolds body slam just cost his team 15 yards. <laughs> yeah, he's a fiery player. Makes a good play right here. But that's tough because I don't know if, if in that amount of time that he really knows that that receiver didn't catch the ball. I didn't. You know, so I mean, you got to make the tackle. And I think just by the nature that of the way he made the tackle is why he got the flag. But I think, especially being a former defensive back, I, I think that was a good play. <laughs> I thought you might. Yeah. First and 10. Now for the Tech 38. They keep it on the ground. And in the hands of Keith Lawson. He got two. To bring up second and eight. You can see SFA completely different approach to their offense in this second half. They're huddling up now and just using all of the play clock and just trying to let this game clock run out. Been a tough night for them. Down to 440 to go here in the third quarter. Again, it's Keith Lawson, and he could not get anywhere. And we 
talked about the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech and how he wants to be aggressive and he's going to be aggressive. Well, he's not calling the dogs off. They're up 54-7, but they're coming every play. The, watch at these linebackers and how they're running to the line of scrimmage right before the ball is snapped. So they're still being aggressive, run blitz, and if it's a pass, they pad, they continue to the quarterback. So no letting up by this Tech defense. Matt Wallerstead still working hard on the sidelines. Getting his plays into the defense. Justice Liggins in motion. And they gave it to him. And he tries to go north. And he couldn't get to the line of scrimmage. Guess who? Micah Alway again. <laughs> He might be the leader in tackles before the game is over. Yeah, he's all over the place. Having a great ball game. Making tackles for losses, tackles on the edges, playing some coverage, dropping in zones. He's had a good ball game tonight. Now with five tackles in this game, he only had 12 all last year, appearing in 13 games as a true freshman. No starts for him yet in his career, but... Things keep going this way. He might have some before too long. Ball brought the 35-yard line. Yeah, surprise there, though. Fourth and nine, and they run the ball. It didn't come close. So they give the ball back to Texas Tech. And Davis Webb will be at the 35-yard line. Down to two minutes and 49 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And we're seeing a lot of the young players, and there are young players that play anyway, but six true freshmen saw time in the game last week. Obviously, Baker Mayfield got the attention for Texas Tech being the true freshman. Carlos Thompson, who we've seen with those big runbacks, saw time a wide receiver last week as well. He's a true freshman. D. Paul, Malik Jenkins, Zach Barnes, Tanner Jacobson, all these guys saw time last week as true freshmen. And here he goes again. Ridden out of bounds, shy of the 25-yard line. This time, it's Quentin White. Yeah, where's he been? This guy is making a case for him to play more. Watch out, Kenny Williams and DeAndre Washington. Quentin White is making a case that he needs to get more playing time. Keep the ball on the ground with White again. Wow, he, he just definitely, picked up 38 on that last play. Yeah, he definitely brings a different dimension in the running game for Tech. I'm sure they're going to have to look at that and figure out some ways that they can get him more touches during the games. Here's Webb with time pressure from behind. He does get the ball off into the end zone. Tech touchdown. Reginald Davis for 23 yards. Freshman to redshirt freshman, Reginald Davis. Yeah, a great job of using his feet to buy more time, and that allows Reggie Davis more time to get open down the field in the end zone, and then it's just an easy throw, but all created by Davis Webb and his feet. Kick is up, kick is good. And the lead grows for Texas Tech, who have now put 61 on the board. Yeah, watch him just escape from pressure and keep his eyes down the field. Just that little bit of time gave Reggie Davis time to separate down the field for the touchdown. We've talked about Reginald Davis, but that was the first career touchdown pass as well for Davis Webb. Reggie Davis caught one last week, but this is the first time Webb's got the chance to throw one. 629 yards of offense now. Wow. It's a valuable experience, especially for the quarterback, Davis Webb. There you see those yards. 232 for the Lumberjacks. The breakdown, 425 through the air for Texas Tech quarterbacks. Mayfield third, 367. Webb now with 58. On the ground, over 200, 204 combined. Now with six different players who have rushed the ball, that includes 66 yards from that guy, Baker Mayfield, that was on the left of your screen. And a long 
night continues for J.C. Harper and company. Yeah, tough night for Stephen at Boston. But how about those two freshman quarterbacks? What do you think Mayfield was telling him? They probably know the same amount of, of information, right? They're both freshman guys. They're just over there having fun, not talking much strategy. Michael Brewer standing there on the sideline going, oh, boy. <laughs> Don't start that one. <laughs> this one is dropped in the end zone, and so if there were any thoughts of taking it out, those are now gone. Let's go to Laura McKeven for another Fox College football game break. We're going to tell you about Notre Dame at Michigan. Third quarter, Devin Gardner with a play-action pass to Jeremy Gallon. 13-yard TD pass, his third TD of the game. Puts Michigan up 34-20 to in the third quarter. Now they're in the fourth quarter, guys. Still the same score and quite the battle going on there at Michigan. Thanks, Laura. Michigan, Notre Dame, one last time. Yeah. Shame to see that that's the last time. Hopefully they can reschedule that thing because that's a big game, big rivalry game. Baker Mayfield started this game and has done nothing that will make Cliff Kingsbury think otherwise in a short week with TCU coming to town on Thursday. Joe Minden for SFA goes out to the boundary and does complete the pass. As he finds Stephen Cunningham again. Four yard pickup. Setting up second and six. So they try and get the offense working. Talking with J.C. Harper. Talking with the offensive staff. For SFA, they emulate the offense that is being run here by Cliff Kingsbury and Texas Tech. They want to be like that, but the pace is so much slower, and now they're trying to do what they can as a first down picked up here by Joshua West. Yeah, I mean, their offense is, is based off the same principles that, that Mike Leach, Holgerson, Kingsbury, uh, Kevin Sumlin, all of them run their own variation, but it all started from the air raid of Mike Leach, and everybody puts their own spin on it. But, yeah, this Texas Tech team, because, I mean, there you have the guy right there that he was, you know, one of the first quarterbacks to run it under Mike Leach, so he understands that the ins and outs of it has developed and put his own touches on it. Handoff this time to Ford. Gets through close to the 45. And, and back to Kingsbury. I mean, being the quarterback, you understand the system inside and out. And you know what what is good about it and what's not so good. So you can work on the good things that he develops quarterbacks very well. Obviously, we see what these two freshmen are doing here tonight, but then how about the freshman that he worked with last year at Texas A&M who may won have, the Heisman Trophy? Yeah, you may have heard of him. Yeah. For one reason or another. <laughs> yeah. In Johnny Manziel. And that, of course, is going to create the comparisons that shouldn't be made with Baker Mayfield, at least not yet, as trying to get away is... The wide receiver, Braxton Bearden. And we've got a couple of Lumberjacks shaking up on the play. But they do pop to their feet. And the question's been asked probably too many times already about the comparisons between the two. And Cliff Kingbury is quick to shut it down. Don't make those comparisons unless you want to talk about the mentality as we reach the end of the third quarter. But a phenom athletically is how he refers to Johnny Manziel. Davis Webb's got his first career touchdown pass, and Texas Tech has a 61 to 7 lead over SFA. Time now for our Coors Light game summary, and there you see it. First half. 42 to 7. Baker Mayfield did what he did all in that first half and has taken a seat on the bench since then. The offense and everybody getting involved in Texas Tech putting up the most points they've done in a few seasons. Yeah, but give their defense a little bit of love too. Only 251 yards allowed, one touchdown. Okay, Got to give that defense a lot of love tonight as well. We've been giving it all to the offense. One touchdown on a trick play. 
That was thrown by a wide receiver. So. <laughs> Defense, aside you keep, from... You, you keep emphasizing that. One man. guy bit, uh, and that's it. <laughs> Fourth and one coming up now after a complete pass over the middle. There's the guy that threw it, Tyler Boyd. He's wondering why it's so hard for the other guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just throw it out there. Look at you just starting the quarterback controversy at Tech, starting the quarterback controversy at Stephen F. Austin. Come on, man. It's week two. <laughs> no one's job is secure in week two. Yeah, man. Time out taken. Boy, throwing as, as well as Atterbury, Attaway, rather. And man. But this spread offense that both teams are running here, Cliff Kingsbury says, it's the great equalizer. It's why so many teams go to it, like an SFA, trying to, well, what do you get out of it? You get the speed, the tempo, you try and wear down some good defenses. And there are so many talented kids now. The talent is as high as it's ever been. It yeah. emphasizes the talent and the skills of these players. Absolutely. And the thing is, the thing is, is that in high school, a lot of these high schools are running the spread offense, the exact ones that they're running now. So they're more prepared to walk in and throw the ball. Back in the old days, it was run on first down, run on second down, and only throw on third. So they weren't prepared to come in and throw the ball at the collegiate level. Now these quarterbacks and these receivers, they're coming in game ready and ready to play in a system that they're already familiar with. Bunting unit comes out for SFA on fourth and one. Flags fly and they won't kick it. Ball starts, number 47, offensive team, five yard penalty, fourth down. Fourth and seven, or excuse me, fourth and one becomes fourth and six as they back him up. And they'll kick it from a little farther back, and there's the guy you need to watch. He's been exciting so far. Carlos Thompson is back to receive again. True freshman's going to get another chance here. He gets it at the 16. Cuts back, and this time, barely gets across the 25. Texas Tech has hung 61 up on the board against Stephen F. Austin so far. Tech up 61 to 7 over Stephen F. Austin. Let's go to Laura McKeeman for a Fox College football game break. Well, the Fighting Iris trying to make a comeback against Michigan. Fourth quarter, Devin Gardner scrambling, scrambling, and ends up on his back. Then Stefan Tuitt comes up with the interception in the end zone to shrink Michigan's lead 34 to 27. Wolverine still on top, guys. Wow, what a terrible throw that was by Devin Gardner. What a bad decision. Can't do that. <laughs> if you do, it turns out like that. It always turns out bad when you try to do something like that. It is fourth down here. <laughs> And Binden to throw, flag is out, and Mosley makes the catch for the touchdown. A nice pitch and catch from Minden to Mosley, 36 yards, but we check the flag. Offside, defense, penalty decline, touchdown. How about that? Touchdown Lumberjack. Yeah, aggressive, you stay aggressive, you run your system, throw the ball down the field, and guess what? You come up with the touchdown. They needed five <laughs> on fourth down. Oh, I thought you made five touchdowns. No. <laughs> I didn't say that. Yeah, how about Mosley up top? It's a good job just throwing that ball out there. Just goes and gets it and makes a play. I mean, that's just a guy making a play, not giving up like we talked about, and just continue to play hard. Looks like they're going for two here. <laughs> After the touchdown. Chance to work on it. So on the two-point conversion attempt, quick throw, near side, behind him. He's looking for Cunningham. And so the 
Two-point try, no good. And the score, after an SFA touchdown there first since the first quarter, is 61-13 in favor of the home team. Back to Fox College Football. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to later in the game. Texas Tech's offense has put up 61 points tonight, which leads us to our Delta Fawcett plays of the game. They started early, first possession, first touchdown to Keith Grant. Yeah, a lot of big plays by this offense tonight. Started first possession, second play of the game, Jaheim Grant, and it didn't stop. How about Jason Morrow over the middle of the field for the touchdown, and then it still didn't stop. Bradley Marquez, a long touchdown pass. And it continued on from there, 700 yards, over 700 yards of offense. On first down, nowhere to go for the SFA offense, who took over after an interception in the end zone. Last two drives have ended in a fumble at the one-yard line and an interception thrown by Davis Webb. That's for Texas Tech giving the long field to work with for Another quarterback coming in for SFA, Hunter Taylor, getting a chance to play. Here at Jones AT&T Stadium, home of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The handoff is to Keith Lawson. Now Joe Menden takes him 99 yards, big throws down the field, and a touchdown pass, and they take him out of the game. <laughs> Brings up third and seven as the freshman Hunter Taylor, White House, Texas. Getting a chance to check in here with five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Hunter Taylor fumbled it off the high snap. It was picked up quickly, though, by Jamarcus Walker. No harm, no foul, although it'll bring up fourth down. <laughs> Not the way they drew it up, but they got it done. And for positive yards. Oz here just, just misses the ball, goes through his hands. Good thing Jamarcus Walker was aware, picked that ball up, and at least recovered it and got a couple positive yards. Well, fourth and seven. SFA is at least going to consider going for it here. They weren't quick to come off the field, and then J.C. Harper brings the troops over. <laughs> they wanted to go for it. I think you got to punt it here, though, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Give, give your punter a little bit of work. I think you got to punt the ball here. Offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. They didn't ever call timeout. They just went to the sideline. So it is a delay of game penalty <laughs> that backs them up even farther. And they will punt the football. And it will give us a chance, potentially, to see Carlos Thompson in the return game again. Thompson has been special on their special teams tonight. He has returned both punts and kicks. He returned a kick 73 yards. And he returned a punt 35 yards. And this one will send him running back, and he won't get a chance to return this one at all as it keeps on rolling. Inside the 15. And they're just going to stand around and wait for it. Run some more clock off. And they do blow this play down. Big 12 with some big performances today. J.W. Walsh, a big day against UTSA. How about Boinkin? Comes Coming in, in yeah. yeah. Entered in the second for Casey Paul Hall. A couple touchdowns there. Lake Seastrunk. 150 yards, three touchdowns. He's a guy that, even before the season started, said, I'm winning the Heisman this year. And he's put two pretty good games together so far. This is a good run on first down. Getting all the way up before he's knocked out of bounds. It was Rodney Hall picking up 16 on first down. And Rodney Hall, a different looking running back, a bigger guy <laughs> than what we've seen out of DeAndre Washington yeah. or Kenny Williams tonight. Yeah, it looks like he's a lot bigger. 
They give it to him again. It bounced right out of his hands. SFA looks like they've fallen on it, and they have. Another turnover here. Allen. So Braylon Allen fell on the football. Yeah. And SFA will take back over. Yeah, I know Coach Kingsbury's not going to be happy about these last three drives, all ending in turnovers. That's one thing you can't do, and that's the frustrating thing for a coach, especially when you're used to the, the type of offense that they play. Can't have those turnovers. To Braylon Allen. True freshman coming up with a fumble recovery. And you can see Cliff Kingsbury right there just shaking his head like you're trying to give these guys some playing time and some experience, but they've got to be ready to play when they get in there. So now about that film session. Yeah, not going to be all positive now. <laughs> the starters can sit back and relax, but these backup guys, they're going to get an earful. They might have to have two film sessions. Yeah, yeah. Split them up. So SFA, another high snap. And this one down the sidelines, broken up. Right, a good play there, defensively, by Naguma. It is Hunter Taylor getting his second series at quarterback for Stephen F. Austin inside the final three minutes now. We've had three different freshman quarterbacks in this game, and we've seen five total. Attaway, Minden, and now Hunter Taylor for Stephen F. Austin. And not much room for Cunningham there as he spun down to the ground. After two. Yeah. Brings up third down. And again, for Texas Tech, just playing zone coverage right now. Just everybody trying to keep the ball in front, keep them inbound so the clock keeps running, and just come up and make the tackle. And SFA, they're not trying to fight it too much either. They're, they're trying to just huddle up, take their time, let this clock run out, and, and get out of here. Matt Waller, Stett looking on. His defense has given up one touchdown here in the second half. Anderson with time. Had no one to go to, so he went short. Staying in bounds for a moment was the running back, Keith Lawson. And the clock keeps on moving. Brings up fourth down for Stephen F. Austin. Lost one, it'll be nine to go. You might as well go for it here, huh? <laughs> We've seen them go for it on fourth and nine before, but now they're going to come out, okay, try a long field goal. We haven't seen that, so might as well get, get your field goal kicker some work. So Jordan Wiggs is out looking for a 50-yard attempt. It'll be his first 50-plus yard attempt of his career. And it looks like a timeout. Delay. Offense. No timeout. A delay. So now well, he can't try a 55 yarder, can he? <laughs> uh, why not? <laughs> Give him an opportunity, but looks like they're bringing it, switching it out. It looks like they might be going for it Taylor, now. Huh? It looks like Taylor Anderson walking back into the game. Yeah. Although, yeah, he stopped and turned back around. So. Backs him up. Fourth and nine field goal, fourth and 14, go for it. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's stuff that they've got to get worked out, though. I mean, you can't have a delay a game penalty in that situation. Anderson looking downfield, oh. intercepted. Uh-oh. And there is room to run. Zach Winbush. To the 10 before he's hauled down. And then he dropped the football at the end. It was picked back up and carried into the end zone. But they marked him down. But you know what? Great job by Winbush. I mean, the, the ball was thrown right to him. But what about the hustle? Great job of hustle by SFA. And that's number 23. The ball does come out right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is a fumble. No question about it, but Tech recovered the fumble, so it, was, it would have still been their ball. 
But how about the hustle? Joshua West could have easily just mailed it in and let him score, but give that young man a lot of credit. But again, good job by Winbush catching the ball. It was thrown right to him, but that young man right there deserves a lot of credit. Could have easily quit in a game where they're down 61-13, but hustles all the way down the field and makes the tackle. The interception returned 68 yards. Down to the 10-yard line and on first and goal, a knee taken by Davis Webb to start the clock moving inside the final minute. So Texas Tech does what they were supposed to do. Comes out, has a big night offensively. Defense performed admirably. They got their starters out of the game and rested for Thursday's big matchup here against TCU. Couldn't ask for much more. And they got Brady Attaway out of the game. They got Baker Mayfield working well again yeah. in the first half. Got all his work in. And now this one is over and everything, all the focus goes to a short week and a big game to start the Big 12 Conference against TCU. Time now for our Whataburger, what a player. Yep, Baker Mayfield. Yeah, all in one half. 367 yards passing, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions. So the young man, the walk-on freshman, played a game and a half and hasn't thrown an interception yet. And has thrown the ball 90 times. Let's check in with Leslie McCaslin. Leslie? Well, Coach, your second win already this season, but where did you see the biggest from week one to week two? You know, I just thought we started faster. We got out and made plays early, and that's what we wanted to do. But still, way too many penalties. Had some turnovers late, so we got to get better next week. A short week before you guys face TCU on Thursday. What will be the focus as you get ready for your first Big 12 game? Yeah, just whoever handles the short week the best, you know. Um, you got to get your guys' legs back and getting ready to go Thursday night. This place will be rocking, so I know our kids will be fired up. Congratulations on your home opener. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. So a big win for Coach Cliff Kingsbury in his home debut. A stadium that he won many games at as a quarterback, but it's his first win. Got to be special as a head coach. Yeah, definitely does. And, I mean, not a lot of bad from their starters to talk about now. Again, like he was saying, get ready for Thursday night because it's going to be a much tougher ball game. That'll do it for us here at Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock where the final score, 61 for Texas Tech, 13 for Stephen F. Austin. Join us for more Fox College football next Saturday with a mean green of North Texas take on the Cardinals of Ball State. The action kicks off at 4 p.m. Eastern right here on Fox Sports Networks. For J.C. Pearson and Leslie McCaslin, I'm Brendan Burke. Thank you for joining us. You have been watching Fox College football on Fox Sports Networks.